Today we are here again for a new session, interesting session on anesthetic considerations in adult heart transplant by Dr. V. Kitiwasan. He was our faculty at RH Perambur and is a very eminent cardiac and uh, pulmonary anesthetist. And uh, we are proud to introduce uh, Dr. Kitiwasan as he has already participated and contributed several times during our ASA annual conferences and he has delivered a wonderful oration and is active contributor for all our activities in Reza all along. He has been a very good teacher. Uh, without wasting much of your time, I hand over the session to Dr. Keithi Wasan to go ahead with anesthetic considerations in adult heart transplant. Over to you, sir. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kamachi. Uh, good morning uh, to all our colleagues and uh, fellow anesthetists and uh, DNB students. Uh, this is my pleasure uh, being invited for this uh, guest lecture. And uh, uh, in fact, uh, I I'm an ex railway colleague, and uh, the through the railway forum, uh, this being arranged means it is uh, a double uh, happiness for me. And uh, this uh, cardiac anesthesiology as such, now it has come as a DNB and uh, uh, fellowship in national board uh, as a such speciality. Uh, but you know, uh, out of the 12,000 anesthetists produced in India, uh, very low percentage of cardiac anesthesiology coming out uh, as a speci such speciality uh, branch. Now we will go into the uh, topic. Heart transplant as such is meant for those who are terminally ill with heart failure. If you look at the literature, the first transplants were done in 1967. Uh, the patient is Louis Pshinsky, who is a 53-year-old uh, terminally ill heart patient. The surgeon who's done is uh, Christian Bernard and uh, the anesthesiologist is uh, Olski in uh, Groot Schuscher Hospital in Cape Town, South Africa. The donor is at uh, Denise Dar Darwell, he is a 25 year old. If you uh, see a uh, search in uh, the net uh, as a first transplant in the world, uh, the surgeon Christian Bernard name was uh, the one which is uh, figuring too much. The anesthesiologist name uh, you have to search deeper to look at uh, who is the anesthesiologist and all that. How he has done his uh, first anesthesia for the hospital, and how he's performed and all those kind of things. He used uh, uh, oxygen and nitric oxide, nitrous oxide uh, for uh, ventilation and uh, gas, uh, the halothane and uh, Ether as a uh, uh, analgesics and uh, pavalon as he, uh, pancronium as he was relaxant. The patient was uh, living for 18 days, then uh, he succumbed to death. And those are the area, area, era where the um, uh, immunosuppressants were not involved. The cyclosporin was not available. That is not cyclosporin. In India, the first transplant was done in 1994 in uh, Alnerd of Medical Science by Dr. Vedago Valkanik, surgeon. And uh, in 95, uh, in uh, Madras Medical Mission, Dr. Kim Cherian did the uh, first transplant. It's a patient is a Maimon baby. Uh, both, uh, they said they were uh, living for uh, nearly seven years post-transplant. Uh, here, this uh, 95 Dr. Kemsi done patient had a, uh, at the age of, I mean, uh, at the fifth year of post transplant had uh, stenting. For after that, he she lived for two years and died. This is uh, Dr. Joseph Osimsky, which I thought I will put the anesthesiologist figure to see. Okay. The eligible candidate for the transplant. There are two methods of bridging. That is, uh, one is uh, medical means, and uh, another is uh, inpatient surgical means. The 
dielectric cardiac memory is the major chunk of people who was waiting for lung, uh, heart transplant. They were medically managed uh, with uh, uh, diuretics and uh, chronotropic agents and all that uh, for a longer period of time. Uh, but uh, there is a, a time where they cannot be living. I mean, they, their life expectancy is not more than six months. Then they are supposed to be recruited or and added to the list of transplant register. Other way of uh, the uh, bridging is uh, the cardiologist uh, advising for cardiac resynchronization therapy and uh, inter inverter con uh, implantable converted defibrillator. This will give some allowance to wait for the transplant. I mean, it don't have to happen. The CRT also has uh, some uh, uh, criteria to uh, allow the patient to go after CRT. Uh, that is uh, the ejection fraction less than 35% and uh, the QRS duration uh, for uh, with the LBB is more than 150 or uh, without LBB is more than 120 millimeter milliseconds. Uh, these are the candidate for CRT, but they will have to some extent uh, the quality of life, uh, even if uh, the EF is uh, increased by 5%, uh, they will uh, go into NHA class uh, 2. Uh, the NHA class 2, 3 and 4 are the patients who are uh, uh, selected for this. Uh, other uh, surgical means of uh, bridging are the uh, LVADs and uh, the ECMOs. Uh, these, uh, the patient has to be uh, inside the hospital for uh, waiting for transplant, but they are uh, allowed as a priority candidates for uh, in the list of uh, uh, recipients. Uh, that is uh, 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 the recent uh, advances make uh, the LVAD or BIVAD as a destination therapy as such. If uh, the uh, uh, transplant waiting period is just too long. And uh, the DCM after that, the congenital heart disease with uh, severe PAH, which is not amenable for uh, medical therapy or, or the candidate for both heart and lung. They, you have to give both heart and lung as an end block uh, transplantation. On medical therapy with the life expectancy of six months. So the Patient need to be consented uh, for the transplant. Uh, not only the patient, but the family also uh, give uh, uh, consent for uh, the surgery as well as the immunosuppressive treatment and its own risk. You know uh, that we will discuss later. But uh, the cost also it is uh, more important uh, for the family. Uh, nowadays uh, the government is taking its steps to offer. Uh, such candidate uh, free of cost uh, and uh, but if you look at uh, the waiting list is just too long uh, and uh, uh, as you think I mean uh, if you look at it uh, the uh, heart transplant in India it's around uh, 250 to 300 uh, numbers only taking place but in uh, west it is around 3000 to 4000 uh, heart transplant altogether sticking but if you look at the waiting list, it is more than 50,000 people are waiting for transplant. Next is a donor. Who is a donor? Uh, the brain date declared and family consented for donating heart. Uh, there are two elements in this brain dead declaration. Uh, and the uh, law states that uh, the brain uh, dead uh, declaration uh, should be given by the two doctors. One is a treating physician and a neurologist. And uh, the, the brain dead declaration uh, by means of uh, three criteria like the loss of uh, pupillary light reflux, uh, reflux and uh, oculocephalic that is dull safe phenomenon reflux. So these with that uh, the apnea test uh, done in half an hour to 45 minutes interval uh, with the PCO2 going up uh, to 60 millimeter mercury. Uh, or the 20 millimeter, mer uh, millimeter mercury of CO2 above the baseline uh, is uh, a positive uh, apnea test. 
uh, in the basis of uh, the patient having a normothenmia, uh, uh, maintaining the stable hemodynamics uh, status. So those two criteria, that is brain, uh, that is neurologist uh, uh, evidence and the apnea test uh, based on which the declaration of brain, brain dead is happening. The family consent uh, for donative heart is very important. Uh, there are two things that is a presumed uh, consent. Uh, means like uh, any uh, brain dead uh, person in, in, in our country uh, is taken as granted he is a donor unless otherwise he is opting out of the list i mean noto that is a national organ uh, national uh, organ tissue transplantation organization uh, in that register if you opt out you cannot take the uh, organ if uh, such uh, uh, voluntary this thing is given that is even now uh, they give uh, expressive consent of donation uh, by the patient and uh, but even even then if at the time of uh, uh, the consent comes uh, the family can overrule and uh, they can even refuse uh, uh, giving uh, the don donation to the uh, recipient so and uh, the informed consent is the uh, one which is given by the patient as i said whether it is a presumed or informed the family uh, is a family people, the close relative, blood relatives are the people who are uh, very much involved. And if they overrule, you cannot take, take the organ. Secondly, the logistics met with the possible ischemic time less than say, five hours. Uh, logistics, I mean, uh, the distance of travel, distance of travel uh, to take the organ from uh, from the uh, donor site to the recipient site, and uh, 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 the uh, the uh, not only the time that uh, the travel and uh, the cost involved, all those things, thing, the patient has to be at. All these things, if it is met with, or the patient relative may not be at uh, station, they will be because the the patient is uh, out of the hospital, and once the uh, signal comes, only they get admitted, and then the patient's relative may be out of station. So all these things. If everything uh, goes fine, then I think we can uh, uh, plan for the transplant. But at the same time, you have to see that the heart get received to the recipient side less than five hours. Then the suitability of the transplant for age and uh, BSA, that is body surface area. And uh, see, that's why the, uh, uh, the donation uh, for uh, the uh, pediatric uh, side is uh, very difficult uh, that uh, age and uh, size of the donation uh, donor is uh, very difficult to get uh, uh, but the adult of course uh, comparatively is easier to get hemodynamically stable with the less sinotrope uh, don uh, donor maintenance is as such uh, a very important role in uh, the hospital where the donor is uh, uh, kept uh, because uh, as a brain uh, brain dead happening the, uh, in, uh, the, uh, the endocrine system activates and uh, the go, patient go into uh, diabetic insipidus and uh, there is hypernatremia, all those kind of uh, things uh, will happen. And uh, the and also, of course, the patient uh, hemodynamically to be kept stable until the recipient team comes and harvests from the uh, uh, graft. Uh, the patient should not be uh, having a, uh, I put in the episodes and uh, the patient uh, uh, should keep them uh, uh, normoxia and uh, normocarbia and uh, the metabolic uh, uh, corrections need to be done. All these things, the, it is the responsibility of the, the hospital where the donor, donor uh, uh, person is kept. kept, kept. Uh, donor age, uh, if it is uh, above 40 years, uh, the uh, coronary angiogram has to be done to rule out uh, the coronary artery disease. Uh, but uh, if uh, multi organ donation is happening in a place where uh, the renal surgeon may object for this, uh, for a coronary angiogram, because the dye induced uh, nephropathy of the uh, donor organ should not happen, like the, the, that is his concern. But if uh, such thing happens and uh, you you are uh, uh, you are supposed to take a, a part for donation, 
then you can take it and uh, come to the recipient site and uh, bench cardiogram bench uh, angiogram can be done uh, infusing the dye into the graft uh, that's why you, that's the way you can rule out cad in a, uh, the graft uh, echo assessment of the cardiac function uh, this is very important because the echo uh, parameters uh, should be suitable for the donation uh, like uh, hypertrophied heart or uh, uh, cardiac heart with uh, coronary artery disease or uh, yeah, wall motion abnormality or anything is uh, found unsuitable that we cannot be uh, rapid. So the suitability should be assessed uh, by the cardiologist in the donor, donor area. And uh, they have to tell us before we start for going for harvest. Investigation for the donor uh, is uh, blood grouping uh, because uh, the based on the blood group only the uh, the recipient is selected. Uh, blood culture and the serology is a must because uh, the uh, donor would have been ventilated for two three days. The patient may have uh, bacteremia and all those kind of things. So uh, if the culture is done and if it is noted to the recipient side, uh, it is easier for them to for the selection of antibiotic and further treatment. Uh, recipient side, what are the investigation you did? Uh, blood cell count, uh, LFT and RFT coagulation. That is a routine thing and serology and thyroid grouping and triage repeating. Uh, X-ray, of course, uh, to rule out any uh, intracurrent uh, chest infection and uh, urine routine to see whether the urine tract infection is there. Uh, cytomegalovirus and Epstein-Barr virus, uh, if it is there, the patient uh, it might warrant uh, the post-operative antiviral treatment that will give you great. Uh, arterial venous problem uh, uh, because uh, the uh, any uh, uh, stenosis or uh, in the cerebral uh, carotid or the femoral artery to rule out because in femoral artery, especially when uh, the patient is TV, need to be supported by intrahiatic balloon pump, uh, this will help you. The venous doubler, why you know the patient with the dialectic cardiomyopathy with blood ridden for longer period of time and may or may not be receiving the heparin uh, uh, the do, I mean, treatment for prophylaxis. So uh, the venous doubler uh, need to be done to rule out any uh, deep pain thrombosis or anything. Uh, panel reactive antibody is a measure of the patient level of sensitization to the HLA antigen. This is uh, done for not only heart, but uh, all the uh, solid organ transplant. Uh, the patient's uh, serum is uh, sent for the analysis. Uh, is, it is expressed as a percentage of a sensitization. Uh, there are uh, 100 panel of uh, blood donors. From them, the lipocytes are taken as an antigen. And uh, patient's serum is uh, uh, cross matched and uh, it is expressed as a percentage. Uh, if uh, the PRA is more than 80%, uh, better not to do a transplant because uh, the acute rejection is, hyperacute rejection is a possibility. If it is less than 80%, then 50% uh, chance of acute rejection is a possibility. And uh, the recent articles shows that uh, uh, the advice of uh, more than 25% of panel reactive antibody itself, better not to use the heart or you have to go for a higher dose of the immunosuppression uh, with the risk told to the patient. If it is less than 25%, zero to 25%, the, the longevity of the survival rate of the patient is good. Donor harvest. Uh, once uh, the donor and the recipient are ready, uh, the harvest team, there are two teams. There are one is the harvest team and another is uh, the, uh, the in-house uh, uh, team where he is, they are supposed to look after the recipient. The donor harvest team has to take necessary surgical cardioplegia uh, materials, surgical and cardioplegia material in ice box. The cardioplegia material uh, uh, should be specialized uh, one which uh, uh, with one dose uh, it might uh, give uh, uh, effect of around uh, one and a half to two hours uh, yeah, kept in the, uh, the graft kept in the ice box. Uh, 
surgeon to do stenotomy and examine the heart uh, for contractility, pericardial bleeding, status of the pericardial coronaries, that is the donor heart. And uh, so in the same time, the uh, renal transplant and the hepatic uh, liver transplant team opens the uh, abdomen. So the, the, from the uh, sternum to up down up to the uh, CIFI sternum. They totally opened and uh, the heart surgeon and the other side, the abdominal people, I mean, the solid organ, which said renal and liver team, will simultaneously will be going ahead. Once the heart uh, is suitable for grafting, uh, then the TOI assessment cardiac function is very important. Uh, they, all, they also reinforce the uh, the decision that uh, the heart is good for craft, crafting. If he is okay, he can signal the recipient team to go ahead. Means like they can come to the theater and all that. So once the the cross clamp time, the you know, uh, I mean the cross clamp need to be done once uh, the the renal and the liver team uh, they are ready to. Take the organ out then only the last the one which is done is a heart and lung and uh, the cross clamp time is noted that way this is the uh, uh, recipient uh, heart which is taken out from the, the sink and uh, the uh, you can see the uh, patient uh, down below without a heart but on uh, heart lung machine recipient management the premedication uh, with the sedative and acid prophylaxis uh, is given, that is the usual thing. And uh, given once the donor harvest team is ready, taken to the theater after giving Celsept, uh, one gram oral, uh, that is a mycophenolate mafetil. I'll come to the description of these uh, uh, drugs later. Uh, now I'll go ahead uh, with the what we are giving to the drug and how we are inducing. So this, uh, along with the premedication, we are giving this uh, immunosuppressive drug, Celsept, and uh, after placing the epic, I mean, the peripheral venous uh, line, methylprednisolone, 500 milligram, and, uh, and with the antibiotic is given. <coughs> there is a first dose of methylprednisolone, which the patient recipient is receiving. Now after that, the um, radial hotline is placed with an RLA and uh, slow induction with the sedative and narcotic with the, and intubated with a paralyzing agent with non depolarization So why I am saying slow induction is the dilated cardiomyopathy, you know, see, it will not uh, 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 tolerate hypotension. Uh, that's why we wanted to uh, give a slow induction. Maybe uh, we can add uh, inotropic agent, uh, a small dose um, during the induction to prevent the uh, hypotensive pit source. If there is a hypotensive episode happens, the patient uh, has to be, I mean, the patient has to be put on pump as early as possible by the surgeon to prevent the uh, cerebral damage of the recipient. Then the patient is ventilated with a 50% oxygen in the air and uh, uh, once the intubation is over and uh, the terminal catheter is placed in right HEV and a PA catheter is placed proximal to SVC because the SVC anastomosis need to be happening. So um, uh, just above the anastomotic uh, area, we are supposed to keep maybe around 10 centimeter, you can float in the uh, TD catheter and keep it like that. There is no need to float inside. Uh, additional femoral line is placed for, uh, arterial line is placed for, in the case of uh, intraatic balloon bump is needed in coming up pump. Or the, I mean, during the uh, cross clamp off. Uh, TOE is placed uh, uh, for the recipient. Uh, this will give you very good information when uh, uh, the cross clamp is off and the heart is started beating. Uh, this will give the filling uh, pressures and uh, the uh, uh, any uh, wall motion abnormalities or uh, such kind of information, you know, you see that will guide uh, whether to support the patient for in the pump for some time or uh, how much anotropy to be added, all those kind of that information, we got it. Patient and then draped supine and one leg is prepared for the case, uh, 
vein is needed for cryptography. Suppose uh, during rafting or you are unable to come off and see that some ST changes are happening, we can take some vein and uh, uh, graft those areas where there is a need of uh, needed to be grafted. Stenotomy done once the donor team gives the clearance. That is uh, the cross clamp. Uh, if they are placing, then we can. That is a signal where you can do the stenotomy. Uh, this is the uh, heart which is received uh, in the uh, recipient uh, table. Uh, looks very good. Recently we did that uh, photo which we are placing. Recipient team to go on pump after the heparinization once the graft reaches the OT. And uh, methyl prednisolone 500 milligram in the pump that is along with the sedative and narcotics and paralyzing agents. This is a second dose of methyl prednisone we are giving. After the uh, uh, left atrial and aortic anastomosis uh, done, the cross clamp uh, can be come off after adequate de-airing uh, so that the heart start beating, coronary uh, perfusion happens. Uh, this uh, this uh, time is noted, so the cross clamp done at the recipient time, recipient site, I mean donor site, and cross crumb released now at the recipient site, it will give you a time delay of the ischemic ischemic time. So if it is less than uh, four hours, the, it's good for the heart. Uh, nothing like uh, in-house uh, donor availability. In-house donor means once theater, the donor, or was the other theater, the recipient, uh, the same. Immediately you can, uh, this one, a matter of one hour, one and a half hours, the heart can start functioning. That's a very good uh, way of uh, doing, but at present we don't have such means. The same hospital ha have been done. So at least if it is uh, systemic time is reduced um, by way of uh, the, uh, the uh, fast tracking, the transport and all those, okay. we can uh, get a good heart Without see the lesser the ischemic time, uh, lesser the inotropic support, and uh, uh, the patient uh, will be weaned faster and extubated, and uh, the 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 chance of low cardiac output is very less. If no lack of low cardiac output is there, the infection rate also come down, and the, ch the chance of the patient getting uh, discharged is quite easier. So all these things depends mostly on the ischemic, ischemic time. Heart starts beating and the remaining anastomosis of the pulmonary artery, uh, uh, IVC and SVC done. So this is uh, one drug which is immunosuppressive agent, which is uh, the brand name is Simulac. The uh, coming uh, the pharmacological name is Basiliximab. This 20 milligram is given a slow IV while coming off. This is a monoclonal antibody HG against interleukin two and T cell. Uh, the uh, immunosuppressive age uh, uh, regimen I'll come later. The residual heparin reversed with protamin. Why we are giving some centers? Uh, they give the pisliximab during after the induction, uh, but uh, some centers uh, they give after uh, that after coming off and uh, the heart is stable and. Uh, uh, you can start the uh, both protamine and basiliximab so that the basiliximab stays longer uh, in the uh, i mean the the loss of basiliximab in the pericardial uh, hemorrhage and all that is less and uh, the, the the loss in the pump fluid is also less the residue heparin is reversed with protamin and uh, inotrope or vasodilator start according to need for a uh, hemodynamic stability the PK theater, uh, then you can float through the uh, SVC and uh, uh, RA, uh, RV and through the pulmonary artery. And uh, the flotation uh, can be guided with TOE, uh, transesophageal echocardiography. Uh, PA and the CEP recorded, uh, PA pulmonary artery pressure and the CEP is recorded for volume status. PA also will give you a clue that uh, which pressure and all that you can give a clue for the, I mean, uh, the LV uh, functioning. 
Cardiac output done in a specified intervals. That is, uh, uh, if the thermodilation catheter gives you another information is cardiac output. The patient shifted to ICU after the, after the closure of the sternum. In the ICU management, the patient is received that is a zero POD. Uh, methyl prednisone and 500 milligram may be uh, along with the antibody. That is, the methyl prednisone is the third dose. And it's a cell sept 500 milligram is the second dose through the RILS tube. Uh, ventilated and once the patient conscious, weaned and extubated. This is a routine. The, it's an, uh, it's eco, uh, usual. Uh, e uh, as the other uh, CABG or valve patient, how do you extubate? The similar manner, we can uh, ventilate the patient and uh, uh, extubate, wean and extubate the patient as usual. First POD, antiviral and steroids added along with the cell sept and antibiotic analysis six. Uh, as I said, the antiviral, uh, depending upon the CME and the EBV load, we can choose uh, the uh, uh, antivirals, um, can cyclovir and like that. And uh, that is a routine dose, routine uh, thing which is uh, uh, selected. The steroids added uh, along with the cell sept. The steroid now what we are going to choose is uh, not the methyl prednisolone. We can go for prednisolone as such. So methyl prednisolone is uh, five times potent than prednisone, and uh, prednisolone is uh, more potent than prednisone. So that's why we chose uh, the more potent uh, uh, steroid uh, as a three dose uh, during induction and pump and uh, zero POD. Now we can choose uh, lesser potent drug like prednisolone with a little higher uh, uh, dosing level. Third POD. The tacrolimus is the one which is another immunosuppressor added starting with a low dose of 0.5 milligram OD and going up. Dose adjusted according to the trough level of 5 to 10 nanogram per ml done every three days. That is trough level of serum level of uh, the tacrolimus is to be done every three to third day. And uh, we have to keep between uh, 5 to 10 nanogram per ml. Uh, this is adjusted uh, uh, BD dose uh, to start with 5, 5 milligram, but we can go 0.5 milligram uh, BD, uh, uh, 1 and 0.5 milligram BD, and 1, 1 milligram per BD, 2 milligram per BD, like that, depending upon the level of uh, the uh, uh, trough level of the uh, tacrolimus. Antifungal added from the day T and dose adjusted according to level of serum creatine. Because uh, the uh, patient is on immunosuppressive agent, uh, even uh, fungal common cells uh, is uh, activated and uh, it might harbor the respiratory system. So, uh, yeah, empirical treatment of antifungal, not necessarily that you have to establish a culture, uh, it has to be started in the third day and it is a uh, antifungals has to be according to the uh, need we can start. Uh, but since uh, the antifungals are nephrotoxic as well, the immunosuppressants both will uh, uh, give a uh, uh, creative level going up. So that these uh, yeah, anti anti uh, immunosuppressants dose, uh, the tip uh, adjustment is uh, uh, not but better tolerated, but antifungal you can modulate so that one of the drug you can uh, come down so that the creatine level is maintained or the renal damage is limit limited. Daily investigations like ECG uh, needed and uh, you have to look for uh, uh, P and uh, R uh, aptitude that is voltage and QR or QT interval. This give you a clue whether the patient is going for some any rejection. Uh, echo, you have to look for biventricular function. The early uh, uh, the rejection might uh, give you a clue. That is, RV dysfunction may give you a clue for early rejection. Alternate day routine blood investigations. That is to look for uh, the sugar and the total count and uh, routine. I mean, uh, yeah, LFT. All these things has to be done. Uh, alternate day uh, transmission, if it is needed, uh, we have to give. Uh, this is LD PRBs that is a liquid depleted, de liquid depleted 
uh, packed RBC has to be given uh, because uh, the uh, LDL depletion will give you uh, uh, safety margin uh, as well as the immunosuppression is needed. Catheter can go off in a second or third POD depending upon the need of the inotrope. If there is no inotrope, it can go early. Simulac to repeated, uh, that is uh, the monoclonal antibody, that is basiliximab to be repeated. The first dose we gave in the OT when you are coming off, and uh, second and third dose to be chosen, fifth POD and 14th POD, because the uh, Simulac, the half-life of Simulac is around seven days. So now coming to the immunosuppression therapy, there is two things. There is one is the induction therapy and there is the, the maintenance therapy. The induction therapy, what we chose is a monoclonal antibody uh, to T cells. Uh, the, the drug chosen now, now is, uh, there are variety of uh, uh, drugs available, monoclonal antibodies are available. Uh, what we choose is the select, which is uh, more, most of the center, this is the one which is used. Use. Uh, other newer uh, directives mob and all those kind of things is uh, uh, monoclonal antibodies are a little costlier when compared to this. That's why we and the it's uh, uh, the the immunosuppression is uh, adequate. So it's given as a three dose. Maintenance therapy is the three drug uh, starting from the uh, uh, from the uh, pre op pre uh, I mean pre medication uh, from the start. We are just give uh, this one. Uh, as I said, the pre-medication we have given a cell set and uh, third day we have started tacrimus and uh, the first day, the first period itself we have started the steroid. So the cell set comes under the uh, uh, anti monopolite area which uh, act against the DNA, RNA synthesis of the T cells and uh, tacrolimus uh, is a calcineurin inhibitor reducing the interleukin 2 and uh, production of il2 receptors expression leading to reduction of t cell activation and uh, prednisone of course uh, this acts against the you not audible uh, your I, voice is breaking breaking now it's okay hello are you able to hear me hello hello no now hello? Is, sir can you repeat from cell step hello uh, yeah. are, sir, can you repeat from cell step sir okay now you are able to hear you uh, yes sir okay the immunosuppressive therapy there are two things that is one is induction therapy and another is a maintenance therapy the induction therapy is uh, what we chose is a monoclonal antibody that is to sit uh, or to this t, t cell uh, that is a simulac. Uh, this is basiliximab. Uh, most of the centers are uh, using this, and uh, there are newer uh, the monoclonal antibodies have come, and uh, this is a, uh, uh, chosen as an induction therapy. Uh, this is given as three doses uh, because uh, it uh, it again at against the T cell and now uh, activated T cells. Okay, so uh, the infection is less when uh, you use this. The other one is a maintenance therapy. There are the, nowadays the three drug regimen is there, starting from uh, the premedication. Uh, the cell sept is an uh, antimetabolite, and uh, this is uh, uh, act against uh, the DNA RNA the synthesis of the T cells, so that uh, T cell uh, necrosis happens. The T cell proliferation is uh, reduced. Uh, that is a, that is a that is a uh, type of immunosuppression that cell sept is offering. The tacrolimus is a one which is a calcineurin inhibitor. Calcineurin is an enzyme which is uh, inhibited by the tacrolimus, uh, and that's uh, by reducing the interleukin expression production and receptor expression. That is leading to the reduction of T cell activation. The third is a prednisolone. Uh, which uh, started with the 60 milligram uh, BD and tapered down to 10 milligram OD in a month time. So initially, uh, we chose a methyl prednisolone, which is more potent than the prednisolone uh, during uh, uh, premedication and, uh, and uh, the coming off and the zero POD. After that, the first POD onwards, the steroid chosen is a prednisolone with a higher dose, to up and taper down to uh, in the month time, depending upon the requirement. 
Suppose the patient shows in a third day or a fifth day, uh, still there is a need for a higher prednisolone uh, 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 drug uh, dosing is needed, then you have to allow that. There is no need to uh, taper faster. So, uh, so if it is allowed, then it's fine. But if sometime, you know, the uh, antibody reaction uh, is still uh, going on and the uh, immunosuppression is uh, to be kept or to be elevated, then naturally the prednisolone dose has to be on the higher, higher side. And there is no need to uh, fastly taper uh, in a month's time. Tacrolimus, of course, uh, instituted in the third day because the cell sept and uh, the steroids are uh, uh, making the way in the this one. And uh, the tacrolimus is a little uh, uh, nephrotoxic than compared to the other two. Uh, and uh, any uh, uh, level, I, as I told, it's to be uh, monitored uh, with the creatine level. And if it creatine goes up or uh, the uh, infection, the total count goes up, then naturally you have to uh, adjust the tacrolimus level and uh, you have to keep it uh, around a uh, trough level of uh, serum trough level of 5 nanogram per ml. So main complications, primary graft dysfunction, uh, this is a pre-existing uh, the donor heart disease, uh, reperfusion injury immediately post transplant or allograft injury occurring during organ retrieval. Uh, so conservation and implantation during the period. So these are all the uh, uh, issues uh, of uh, primary graft dysfunction. Uh, uh, this uh, might need uh, the patient coming after coming off with the support, some IABP and ECMO or temporary ventricular acid device uh, for the donor heart has to be done. So uh, along with along with the immunosuppression. This is a primary graft dysfunction. The secondary graft dysfunction is a rejection. It uh, goes in the three uh, uh, manner, three types. This is hyperacute, acute, and chronic. Hyperacute state can happen after the release of cross clamp. Uh, if ABO incompatibility is there or cytotoxic antibodies on the allograft, the heart doesn't function properly. The once the graft is, I mean, cross clamp is uh, removed, uh, the heart uh, uh, doesn't come off. I mean, start beating. It slowly, you know, see uh, weaker contraction and bradycardia, unable to come off. So distension of the high graft, all this happens. Uh, so that's why the PRA level, if it is more than 80%, better not to graft the patient. So you have to wait. And uh, if you if you have a graft and the patient is uh, uh, needed uh, the, as an urgent manner, and if the PRA level is more than 80%, you are not left with no other option. So graft and you are supposed to uh, support the patient with a higher level of anti, uh, immunosuppressant sand, uh, probably IABP and all those VADs and all that you have to do. The, these antibodies uh, include both complement and activation and stimulation of endothelial cell to secrete one Willebrand procoagulin resulting in the platelet addition and aggression. So the irreversible damage occurs via thrombosis and the graft necrosis has happened. So even otherwise also, you know, that's why the, the discourage uh, the people who are above the level of uh, the PRV 80% should not go for grafting unless otherwise they are treated to reduce the uh, autoantibodies in their serum uh, by, I'll come later, the plasma phoresis, all those kind of things. Measures are there to uh, make them optimized for the graft uh, to have a PRA level less than 80% or uh, even less, uh, we can make them uh, prior to graft for them to be ready for the heart transplant. Acute rejection, this is acute cellular and uh, T cell mediated and humoral, both way the this one uh, happen happening. 
acute rejection is uh, most likely to occur in the first three months, three to six months, uh, with the uh, incident declining significantly after this time. And uh, the first year, most deaths are due to either acute rejection, 18% or infection, 22%. The mainstay of treatment is the intravenous steroids and uh, T cell depletion uh, regimen, and the main standard therapy for the T cell mediated rejection. Uh, so, you can uh, desensitize the patient, as I said already. The frequently used desensitization strategies in the heart, uh, heart transplant are the plasma paralysis and IV, uh, that is intravenous immunoglobulin. The intravenous immunoglobulin here, what we state is a polyclonal and uh, it acts against the variety of the uh, uh, the uh, antibodies which is uh, in the recipient uh, serum. So that you can reduce uh, the uh, all uh, antibodies so that the PRA level uh, is acceptable to the uh, patient recipient for the heart transplant. The other regimen is uh, plasma cell uh, 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 reduction. Uh, as you, you can see the uh, the left side uh, how the cells are uh, giving uh, the immune defense mechanism the monocyte getting into the dendritic cell and uh, natural killer cells and T cells. Here, right side, the plasmapheresis and the IVG is uh, to reduce antibodies. And uh, the proto proteosome inhibitors, another way that is uh, like uh, the botisome, uh, that is 8% of the patients be treated. The plasma cell are the secondary uh, defense uh, agents. Uh, like uh, they are produced in uh, lymphoid tissues, lympho lymph nodes, and uh, spleen, uh, which uh, also uh, expresses the antibody uh, in the uh, recipient serum, uh, where these can be uh, immunosuppressed by the proteasome inhibitors. Uh, this is another way that we can do. But uh, now, uh, this regimen we are not uh, doing. The other one, as I said, the T cell and B cell suppression by rituximab. Uh, this is equal what we are using. That is a monoclonal antibody. Uh, what we chose is the basiliximab. The rituximab is a little costlier. And of course, uh, it is a reliable uh, immunosuppression it offers. So under the this one, the destination therapy, uh, desensitization therapy, the frequency frequency of use in the heart transplant desensitization is uh, to make people more available for transplant IV, IG is uh, been done, given, and uh, plasma uh, some centers are using. The next, uh, the uh, immunosuppressive agent uh, as an induction therapy is the monoclonal antibody. And uh, the anti-thymocytic globulin also we can use as a immunosuppressive agent in 19% of the patient and the Boltix mass. The others, as I said, as a maintenance therapy, the MMF is a microphenolate mafetil. And uh, cyclospor cyclopasmamide and cyclosporin, all those uh, things which is uh, used uh, prior to MMF, prior MMF there's more of uh, renal toxicity and cytotoxicity. That's why now the chosen uh, drug as a maintenance therapy is the MMF, that is mycophenolate mofetil. Chronic rejection can happen after six months, even after one year. Uh, as I said, uh, the patient uh, who has come uh, uh, after five years of post-transplant in our setup in 1994, which was done by Dr. KMC, Kemcherian, uh this this is because of uh, the coronary artery vasculitis so vasculopathy is a common thing which happens it's a slow uh, process of uh, the vasculitis producing the endothelial proliferation pro proliferation and narrow, narrowing the coronary arteries causing ischemia this is more like a more like a ischemic heart disease and uh, naturally you are supposed to treat this if it is a uh, uh, discrete uh, element, we can uh, use a stent and all that. But mostly the vasculopathy is a diffuse disease. So if uh, the medical means are uh, not possible, then the patient has to go for a second transplant.
world wide heart transplant survival rate is uh, now is greater than 80 percent after one year and uh, 69 percent of years of for adults average life expectancy is 13.5 years uh, we also in our uh, in, the, in india also the life expectancy is uh, uh, those who live is uh, around 12 to 13 12 to 13 years is there in our, in our setup but compared to the other organ in the thoracic organ like a lung the success rate and uh, the survival rates more in heart transplant thank you thank you sir thank you very much sir hi yes sir you can uh, stop sharing sir yeah uh, you are sharing where to go for sharing? The top, in the top, the top center. Share, yeah. Huh? yeah, top center, sir. Center of the top of the screen. You want to stop video? Yeah, Participants, stop. Huh? No, no. Chat, That's chat, huh? No, oh, stop sharing. Stop sharing, okay. Stop sharing, okay. Uh, yes, sir. Then, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for an elaborate and wonderful, very informative session on heart transplant day-to-day -day management. I hope our participants would have uh, experienced as if they had managed a heart transplantation unit uh, all along during this one hour. And now the session is open for questions. Students, any doubt, feel free to ask our expert who has done a lot of work in the transplant unit in uh, under different uh, ex uh, elite surgeon surgical teams. Any questions from the students? Because we'll be having very little exposure during our uh, primary DNB or secondary DNB course uh, training. These are all subspecialties recently evolved, and uh, we don't get uh, exposure to them uh, on a regular basis for most of the students. So it's a rare opportunity to interact with uh, one of those experts who has been doing it. Yeah, Dr. Vikas, kindly unmute yourself and you can ask a question. Uh, sir, uh, I want to ask. Uh, yeah. Sir, when the heart transplant was uh, started, uh, like in India in 1994, uh, which uh, sir, uh, the cardioplegic solution was composed of what thing? And right now, like uh, what it is composed of, whether it is same or we have changed something. Uh, and sir, uh, uh, can you briefly tell sir uh, which drugs we were using at that time? That like you were saying, uh, uh, when it was initially started, we were having halothane, nitrous, uh, pancuronium, uh, and. Uh, yes, uh, and what but, now we yeah. are uh, what yeah uh, actually uh, over a period of time uh, the refined way of uh, management is happening um, uh, in uh, those days uh, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, pancronium was a mainstay of uh, non depolarizer even uh, even uh, i don't think whether they have used a d2 book or arena or anything but now, of course, we have uh, procuronium and uh, procurium uh, for non depolarization We never use uh, scoline for these such patients. Uh, in uh, vapors, uh, the uh, ether and uh, halothane has gone out of uh, uh, this one favor. Now the vapor, what we use is isoflurane, and uh, 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 so sevoflurane. So uh, those days, as, I, as you were asking in 1994, uh, I have not worked in uh, Alinus, but I worked in uh, Railway Hospital, so, Parambo Railway Hospital. So we, those days, uh, I saw uh, fluorine was a mainstay. Halothane also was going off. Uh, for a heart transplant to happen, uh, uh, there is uh, no uh, uh, choice. Uh, you can make it. Anything can the, can can hold good, because only thing is you are supposed to maintain uh, stable hemodynamics. Uh, what uh, the first transplant surgeon uh, Ozinski used was, uh, as he said, uh, oxygen and nitric oxide, nitro, sorry, nitrous oxide, as yes. an index agent, uh, as a uh, maintenance agent. Uh, nowadays, the, the nitrous oxide, nobody is using uh, uh, cardiac side, mostly oxygen and air. Uh, of course, the old timers still use, but uh, the newer people, uh, they don't uh, like the nitrous oxide as a maintenance uh, uh, for ventilation in, uh, inside the theater. Uh, they mostly use sevoflurane, uh, but it doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference, but 
except that vigilant uh, look at uh, the hemodynamics if there is hypotension go for some inotropic support and uh, come off so even if there is a hypoto hypotension give it see the surgeon is ready go on pump so that anomaly is given to you so uh, the choice of course because the newer things are coming we can choose still the uh, newer things uh, it gives you a cardioplegia solution sir cardioplegia solution uh, the cardiosol uh, or uh, the uh, i don't know the uh, the which contains uh, potassium magnesium uh, glycine all these uh, you know uh, actually i i don't know the uh, the exact uh, the formulation which has uh, been uh, uh, used uh, but that solution gives uh, relief of uh, one to one and a half hours the uh, hot so uh, the the one which is used is uh, the potassium which is a prepared solution which is used for a regular uh, heart surgeries uh, here it's a prepared one the available in the market yes sir. If no questions, uh, uh, any more questions, please, from the students? Okay. So if no questions, we can, uh, once again, on behalf of Raisa and our uh, students and other faculty, I thank uh, Dr. Kriti Vasan sir for uh, giving, spending his valuable time with us on this Sunday morning. And I take his permission to, and uh, take the permission of the participants also. To upload this uh, interesting and informative video in uh, our YouTube channel of Raisa so that it will benefit all the other participants who could not attend the session live. With your permission, can I sign off this meeting today, sir? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you participants. Bye. Good day, sir. Good day, good day.